Well hello again and welcome back to another video. I thought I'd do something a little bit different again today and um, in front of us in the big bag here is my inflatable Canadian canoe and I thought I'd look a bit more at I'm a great believer in everybody what, whatever budget you have it's possible to get on the water and I thought we'd have a look today at even cheaper boating um, and I'd, the reason for this video basically is uh, I don't get to use this boat much these days and it stays wrapped up in its bag and um, a couple of times a year I do like to inflate it and I just thought I'd do a little video uh, of, the, of this boat and check it's okay and it still holds air um, I've had this boat for, for many years it was I'm not going to say the first inflatable uh, Canadian canoe because they've been about for many many years now I mean in, inflatable boats came about um, really during the Second World War when they really came into their own and they were developed um, and used extensively and then have been developed further and further with newer the, the newer materials we've developed thereafter and um, I think I bought this one in around 2001 2002 so it's it's you know 16 17 probably even 18 years old now and um, so I thought I'd have a look at it and show you it and um, there's many many inflatable kayaks and canoes on the market these days and I thought we'd have a look at what I class as a canoe and what I class as a kayak as well while we're doing this video but I'll get it out the bag and um, start inflating it and show you it and um, we'll take it from there so this uh, canoe as I say made by Zodiac was really developed I believe um, for some French expeditions right up the upper night uh, up sorry upper amazon river um in the 1990s and so obviously it's uh, a very rugged thing it's well built um it's made of quite thick uh inflatable boat fabric which i believe is called hyperlon and the seams are double taped and as I say, uh, I've, I've had it all those years now. And so without further ado, I'll get on and, um, you know, I won't ramble on and I'll get on and, and blow it up and, and show you it then, show you it inflated. So there again, just before we get inflating it, this um, is known as a three, it's got three chambers. It's got two side chambers and the floor also inflates on this. Um, and which I believe I called the, I think this is called a Boston valve. Uh, get my hand out of the way. That bit goes into there and tightens up. And then our pump, it comes off our pump, the, the seal, and our pump goes into there, and then we just pump up as normal. Well there we go, um, that's now inflated. I haven't over inflated it because it's in the sun. And one thing always to bear in mind um, with inflatable boats, and I know a lot of people more often than not in it, probably not so much now because our fabrics are so much better. And particularly this Hyperlon type fabric and with the, with the glue we've got on the seams, but I do know years ago, if you blew an inflatable boat up and then put it on a really hot beach or on a hot boat, if it was a tender, the air inside of the chambers heated up even more. And so the air expanded. And you know, before you know, you've, you've got the boat really hard and you can split the seams. So always bear in mind if it's a really hot day with an inflatable boat, even still today, you know, don't over inflate it, keep checking it and uh, rather leave it just slightly under inflated 
and leave it in the sun for a few minutes and you'll find you know you'll come back to it and it'll be very very hard um, as the air in heats up in the chambers as you can see this is this is quite a quite a serious piece of kit this uh, jumbo um, very well made and um, I mean considering as I say I'm really pleased again with it I I do keep it in a dry garage but that is sometimes it's not unbeknown that mice do get in the garage in the winter uh, I try you know to keep them out and obviously um, there again bear in mind they do seem to love these hyperlon fabrics and they will chew um, you know even anywhere on it they will if you do get if you keep it somewhere where there's yeah you know, it's mice prone um, and keep it dry and always you know wipe your inflatable boat or canoe or kayak or paddleboard you can even get inflatable paddleboards now do wipe them down and make sure they're as dry as they can be uh, before you pack them away for any long period of time you know if you've used it and it's got wet and you've got the space to bring it home and sort of dry it out I would always recommend that I think you know they do last the seams and the glue and everything lasts a lot longer um, if you do you know, look after them it's like everything in life so as I say this is the Zodiac uh, Jumbo um, it's a three three adult size uh, canoe there's plenty of room also for luggage um, what I didn't explain was this does come also with some seats and you can see I've had to um, write on them where they go because I can remember remember that one I believe um, comes like that only There we go it's best it's best really to put the seats in before you inflate it that is a proper way obviously this is just to make sure it's okay and to blow it up and to probably clean any bits of dust out of the bottom of it um, you do get another seat or um, I did as well that goes along the middle there and then through these holes you tie the you tie the, this rope also was supplied with it and you'd loop through you sort of kind of stitch it and tie it uh, through the holes and then that keeps the seat nicely in place and obviously those seats pull the pull the tubes of the boat out more and make it a bit more structured and rigid it's an excellent thing um, I have got would you believe this is um, and I would have to look it out because I don't know where it is at the moment. It is possible, and I have never really achieved getting it. It's quite an art to folding this back up when you let the air out of it. But I have got a rucksack that this fits onto. So, you know, theoretically you can trek with it, but it is still heavy and it's still a big, you, well, you, you've seen the size that I, got it to in the bag down here when before we blew it up um, I've struggled to get it any smaller than that and it just about fits the rucksack but it's still quite a fair old lug and obviously then you've got the you've got the seats um, you I, I think I got four um, Canadian canoe type paddles with it as well so you've got to you know you, I, I wouldn't want to trek far with it but if, if you um, say we're looking to go on some remote water it is possible to carry it um, you know um, on the rucksack um, but sadly um, this isn't made anymore it is not possible to, to buy uh, the the jumbo range um, Zodiac I don't think make any kayaks or canoes or any they still make inflatable boats tenders and dinghies and that kind of thing and sports uh, inflatable boats but I don't think they make um, any canoes these days but there's many many there's many more firms that do and obviously this is this in its day was top of the range and as I say can easily accommodate three adults and luggage so it is big um, and obviously therefore you know you might want to go for something I mean I think 
this is all about budget boating and how to get started in budget on in boats and if you want to get on the water cheaply i think you can go and buy an inflatable um what is called a kayak canoe or sit on um canoe because the sit on canoes have become very popular or the sit on kayak if you want it's we'll, we'll come into this canoe and kayak in a minute um I think you can you can probably get something for around you know round about the two hundred pound in in UK pounds, around about the two hundred pounds mark as a as a really entry starter thing. You might even get a little bit cheaper, which would be fine for flat water paddling on a on a flat water slow running river or on a canal um, to go and explore. You know, and um, I mean it's a great it's a great way of getting into boating. Um, I started canoeing at school many, many years ago. I won't tell you how many years ago that was. Um, and have done it on and off ever since. So I've had it blown up some time now. And it's, it, um, there again with the sun on, it's even got tighter, as I've just said. Um, this time of the year, obviously, the, the, and the sun is moving round now. So there's, there's no great danger. But no, I'm really pleased it's, it still holds there. The valves all seem okay. Um, I've even found I um, <laughs> still have the um, original repair kit, which has never been opened. There is a valve, there is a um, um, a pressure tester that came with it. But to be honest, I I, I could never get that to work. Yes, uh, um, the instructions with it are, are kind of very vague and um, I mean it looks to me as though you just stick it stick it in the in the valves but um, it doesn't the where the valves are then you can't you can't really read the you know the pressure on it so it's a bit of a bit of a bit of a loss really but I, I suppose the thought was there and um, perhaps if you got in the boat and bent down and, and had a look you might and I've also got the original instructions still and um, which tells me the date and it was manufactured in uh, 2002 so it is exactly 17 is exactly 17 years old so um, it's remarkable and say it was early on um, those first years it, it was used a lot um, and in fact I lent I lent it I'll just turn it around a little bit I um, lent it to uh, a couple that um, actually um, took it on the Caledonian Canal in Scotland and, and canoed a big part of that um, with their luggage and everything. So it's a much travelled thing as that's been well looked after. For a time I kept it on, on one of my boats that I had as almost like a tender. Um, but I, I haven't done that. It's, it's, it's quite a biggish bag. Um, but perhaps, you know, so it gets some more use and gets used a bit more, I might consider redoing that. Um, but a lovely thing. And as I say, um, any form of um, sit-on kayak or a kayak or a canoe, be it inflatable or a solid uh, plastic as they are now, and most of the canoes and kayaks um, are made from recycled materials, the plastic ones, which we'll probably have a look at a little bit later on. Um, but yeah, the inflatable ones are great because they pack up, you can keep them in a, in a, in a spare room in the house or in the garage or even in the shed as long as I say, as long as you look after them and keep them out of the way of the mice in the winter particularly um, but a great great way into boating you know um, I would urge anyone obviously um, if you've never done any kayak kayaking or canoeing you know don't go off on some white water river you know go to a canal or a very slow running river or even better go and have some experience, you know, go and try it, go and hire a boat or go to a club um, and get into it that way. Um, but there, there's no reason why you shouldn't buy an inf a cheap inflatable canoe and take it to, you know, some still water and, you know, with the necessary precautions, there again, always, as you know me, I'm always banging on about wearing some kind of buoyancy aid or life jacket, very important in a boat like this. You never know what's gonna happen and um you know you can have some really great fun you know as i say um this isn't this isn't and i'm going to stress that this isn't suitable for seagoing conditions you would not take this you know um 
to do any coastal work that is not what that was designed for it is I have just looked at the instructions it is designed and will withstand white water um, and obviously the, the bottom is very well built and it just told me in the instructions that it will take you know rivers with quite big boulders and that that won't hurt it um, but obviously that's its limitations you wouldn't dream you know of taking this you know this is not a thing that's designed for coastal um, work at all you know in fact I wouldn't take any inflatable kayak uh, on the coast on the sea because the wind does pick inflatable boats up um, even if there was two, you know, guys in there paddling, you know, the tide and the wind can soon pick you up and you can soon be a long way off. You know, if you want to go sea kayaking, that is a different ball game altogether. And I would stress that, you know, you then do go and get some experience with some experienced people. Um, and obviously those are rigid plastic sea kayaks that are specially designed you know for kayaking on the sea um, this is purely lakes and rivers uh, and canals or still water what we're talking about this would be great you know this this would be great say if you went on holiday in the lake district and wanted a diddle about on the, some of the lakes Windermere Coniston there's some great canoe trails up there um, yeah, and this is ideal. Um, you know, it fits in the back of the car. Doesn't take a lot of room up. Um, you could even, as I say, even if you didn't have a car, you could manage, as I say, with the rucksack. And if you, if there was two people um, with you, you know, to get it to some locations, um, it is possible. Um, but there we go. Yep. So that's the jumbo inflatable canoe, and I call this a Canadian canoe, obviously because it's based on the shape of the original birch bark Canadian canoes. And then obviously to pack the um, inflatable canoe away, it's such a simple process of undoing the air valves and letting it out and getting as much air out as humanly possible it is possible to reverse the pump and almost take the air out with the pump reverse so it's sucking the air out um, I have done that before and, and to get it as neatly packed up as possible um, so we'll have a look to say well whenever I get it deflated um, we'll have a look and, and um, I'll um, show you how I kind of fold it up then and how well, how easy it is you know it um, so there we go uh, just a quick last little look there that's about the size of the jumbo folded up I haven't folded up very well because I'm probably going to reinflate it tomorrow but you can see it does for the size boat it does roll up pretty small and um, it's amazing really you know um, considering this boat can take three adults and plus a lot of other luggage as well if you wanted to um, it's quite amazing how small you can get that really so um, there we go that's just a quick look as I say with it deflated and folded I haven't put it in the bag yet right well just very briefly um, I've been speaking about canoes and kayaks now I have brought into the picture here um, my very basic uh, perception dancer and this is a kayak and the reason I was always taught this was a kayak is it's got the small if you can see there it's got the small keyhole opening that I have a spray deck a nylon spray deck that clips but you wear it a bit like a skirt it's got a um, elasticated waist and then it clips in around this edge and as I say this is like a keyhole entry kayak and that what I was always taught whether it's right or not is the difference a kayak has this keyhole um, if you like smaller 
entry where you slide your legs in you've got foot rests adjustable foot rests at the front there um, we're looking at it this is the back this is the back here and that's the front up there so your legs actually slide in there and there are foot rests where your foot you know where you can push on to paddle and as I say this is this is a true kayak um, but this is a great this is a great starter boat it's the Perception Dancer XT, very, very basic, easy to paddle, easy to manoeuvre, not too heavy, environmentally friendly, because this kayak is made out of old ground up and reconstituated plastic bottles. So obviously, um, you know, very um, eco-friendly in that respect. Um, it's not been, not, no new plastic has been made using it. It's been made out of basically old um, pot bottles or lemonade bottles or that kind of bottle. Um, so very easy. This, you know, a kayak like this, you know, well, you, you could probably pick a second hand kayak up like this for 40 or 50 pounds in your locality, you know, or as I say, a new sit on um, kayak you know is is relatively there again relatively cheap you know you can it's not what i'm trying to say here this you know entry level into getting on the water um is not expensive if you if you really want to have a go and have a go at some kind of activity on not flask flowing water as i were just talking about the canal or the river um because it, it's brilliant believe me particularly if you go you know early in the morning and you go for a paddle and you're low down you're you're sitting right near, you know on the virtually on the water and you're, you're moving along you're not got an engine you know you're and the wildlife that you see is amazing well thanks for watching uh, that video and um, that has inspired me now to go on a paddle so um, as I say thanks for watching sorry it's a bit long-winded um, I had to cut 30 minutes out of it. Um, I can ramble on about boats and canoeing and all that kind of thing. Um, so please do subscribe, do come back, do come back and have a look at the video when we go paddling. Uh, so that's inspired me to get out back in the canoes again now. Um, so thanks again and um, thank you again to everybody that has subscribed and viewed my videos and commented and as I say if you have any comments or views we'd love to hear from them good or bad we don't mind so um, we'll see you in a future video and thanks again and bye for now